Hey guys, on today's show, we are going to be talking about photography. We're going to be sharing some tips and uh, there may be some things you haven't thought about. And it's all starting right this second. And we don't have an intro to run, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to Justin. You ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Church Media Guys show. I'm Dave, and if this is your first time here and you want to learn how to use and exploit media and technology so that you can like change people's lives and and like share the gospel and 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 like be really effective for Christ, then start now by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so that you can be notified any and every time we do something on this wonderful YouTube channel of ours. With me as always is this guy right here, Mr. Justin Nava. What's going on guys, Justin here, and a special shout out if you're watching post, uh, afterwards, listening to it, watching it, uh, watching it while you're listening to it, maybe put on YouTube, you put your phone aside, but a special shout out to people watching live, Josh, Ryan, Pete, Josh again, <laughs> Adam, uh, let's see, we got Ryan, Christopher, Tommy, welcome all you guys watching live, God, glad you're here, but also glad we had Man, we spent like 15 minutes pre-show just talking yeah. and uh, good stuff. And, Loving that. and you just you don't get the pre-show and post-show the day after. So no. uh, welcome, guys. All Glad you were away. here uh, contributing to that to that special discussion. And uh, Dave, happy Tuesday. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Happy Tuesday to you. Guess what tomorrow is? I'm not ashamed of it. Wednesday. Yes. And it is what? You're my business partner and my buddy. You should know this. How come you don't know this? Wow, this is it's your birthday. Yes. Oh yeah, today's my father-in-law's birthday. So oh, okay. Hang on. Yeah. So um, okay. Oh, your birthday. I thought we on were on me. That's easy. To I remember. thought we were on me. All of a sudden, we're talking about your dad-in-law. I thought you were a humble individual. Have you met me? No. Are you going to be one of those basic? Uh, you going to be one of those basic women that's like, "It's my birthday. No work. Everyone focus on me. Birthday lunch. Birthday week. Birthday celebration." Is that is that you? Yes. Who, you? Who's taking Monster. me out to lunch tomorrow? Seriously, I'm asking. Anybody? Somebody? Anybody? Tommy. I'll Venmo you. How, how old are you? How old are you going to uh, be? Tomorrow at 8 p.m., 8, 10, 8, 14, I think, p.m. Tomorrow night, I will be 47. Oh, okay, so I'm going to Venmo you 47 cents, and Perfect. you can go buy a Bazooka Joe. It's going to cost a dollar to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that that piece of bubble gum will be significantly offset. There you go. But anyways, happy early birthday Thanks, to man. Dave. I thought your birthday was in the spring. I don't know why I thought it was in the spring. So it wasn't even on my radar. Nope. I was born on the day that Nixon was elected to his second term. That kind of didn't work out that well. So it's your fault. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like uh, I was born right before uh not what was the the stock crash of 87 it was called black not black monday because that was the depression right but there was there was another big stock yeah crash i remember right I, before i was born yes you were the, you <laughs> yeah were i know the you one. remember yes was, so i was the one i was i was my what, fault. sorry guys <laughs> it's like it's like right right before that happens it's like whoa something evil has entered the world <laughs> right so james uh changed. james said it's dave's birth month Please, no, I hate that. I birth month, birth week. No, 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 no. All right, so Dave, what are we talking about today? What we're talking about your birthday, all the show. Yes. Uh, what is this? Uh, yes, five uh, birthday things that Dave wants that you haven't heard. There you go, that's it. No, we're talking about photography, and we're kind of on a photography kick right now. Um, we have uh, uh, somebody on our team who has uh, is becoming a uh, a real spokesperson for the craft. Uh, namely you, and uh, I believe, uh, aren't you like on some sort of a cool summit thing that's happening or something? And yeah, you're, like, church photographers. Brilliance? Church, <laughs> yeah, church photographer summit. Uh, you can go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash photo, and that'll take you to the sign up. They got another URL. You can just search church photography summit. I'll be speaking there uh, more from a leadership perspective. My talk uh, is uh blah, blah, what is it called photography in guest ministry and i'm very excited because 205 people are booked to attend so i'm very very excited about that so uh i guess dave walked away so i guess i'll give i'll give the information now i wasn't prepared but no, 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 i'm, I'm here i'm, I'm here you're just you're just full screen <laughs> yeah okay so church photographer summit go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash photo i'll put a link down below um 
there's there's going to be speakers from let me just pull up the page here uh there's going to be speakers from all over giving all kinds of talks and uh mine is on guest ministry photography in guest ministry i'm also be talking a little bit about how to keep photographers on your team we also got let me scroll down we got uh justin dean will be there rob lauder of course he's running it kyler nixon if you're familiar with him michael tuzinski we had him on the show a couple months ago and brady Shearer will be there as well and there are two different tracks. There are a photographer, there's a photographer track. So hands-on how-to content for photographers. And then there's a leadership track, which is insights and coaching for leading a church photography team. Of course, my stuff is on the leadership track. That's where I have more experience. So if you are hands-on, you need to know uh, about all the technical stuff and you know the how-tos, there's stuff for you. If you are in more of a leadership role, you oversee photographers or you want to add a photographer to your team, take that off your plate. That would be the leadership track. Really good stuff. And it's free. And it's this Thursday. So that's why we're talking about photography today, because it's on our minds. And uh, go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash photo. That's our affiliate link. And when you do that, um, forward me your uh, receipt, your confirmation email, justin at, tra- justin at churchtrainingacademy.com. Forward me your receipt, and I will send you to ebooks that me and Dave have, uh, 100 photography tips and the mystifying flash photography. So I'm very excited about that. So you only get those books right now if you sign up for the summit. So even if you sign up and don't go, just send me your receipt, not receipt because it's free, email confirmation, right. and I will uh, send you the two ebooks for free. And then there's something else, but th- there's one more thing, but we'll get to it later because I want to jump into the content Yes, uh, because question of the day, how often do you take photos of your church? Do you have your camera every week? Do you just roam around once a month? That's kind of what I did. Uh, are you doing it once a quarter? Are you doing it just for Fo- holidays? Question photos of, the day, of your church? Often, yeah, photos of your church. Like not the building, but like how often are you r- walking around with the camera, gotcha. taking pictures of things going on? Gotcha. That's what I'm, that's what I'm curious about. But Dave, let's get into it. Uh, five church photography tips that you haven't heard. And I picked this title very specifically because if you search church photography tips, uh-huh. there's a good couple pages on YouTube okay. that have generic church photography tips, you know. <clears throat> Ready for this, guys? Yeah. Use a tripod. <gasps> oh! <laughs> and it's like on all of those videos. And I said, we cannot do another video like that that's just, you know, s- sit up, s- lean against a wall, you know? I wanted to give actual tips that we haven't heard of. So I kind of scoured those videos and found some things that you and I do uh, that uh, we haven't talked about and others are not talking about. So this is hopefully uh, the first place you'll hear about this. So five church photography tips you haven't heard of. Number one. Yes. And I, and I don't, I don't hear this enough guys. Um, We want you to be networked with other photographers. And if you take it somewhat seriously, even as a hobby, You probably know other photographers and just like with uh maybe uh (laughs) like my wife and her friend sometimes they swap clothes uh if you know a photographer that has a similar camera to you or whatever see if you can lens swap with that photographer yeah and that way you can get a second lens or a third lens without having to pay for anything and uh if you need it for a special event uh you can use that so for example uh, my dad and I both have can- Canon SLRs mm-hmm. and DSLRs, and he has the super, I don't have it in here, uh, but he has like a super teles- tel- like tele... Like the big 300 millimeter telescopic lens. There you go. Telescopic. I yes. was like telephoto lens. That yes. doesn't make any sense. Telescopic lens. Huge. I mean, you could be sitting in the nosebleeds, and you, he can zoom in and see the peach hairs on the picture's face. Okay? Wow. Uh, it's a young picture. It's, it's huge. I mean, I think that sometimes he gets patted down so they make sure it's not a gun. Yeah. Uh, but, like, he has that. I don't. But when I am going to a sporting event that he can't go, I'll ask him, hey, can I borrow yeah. your telescopic lens? And maybe I don't. But maybe you have a lens that they don't have. Y'all can go ahead and swap. And you have basically an extra lens without having to buy one or rent one. So, you know, find another photographer. Meet another photographer if you have someone in there. Go ahead and just say, hey, what lenses do you have? Do you mind swapping? Uh, That's kind of what we would do there. Number two, I'm going to go into number two here. So I don't hear that very often. Number two, I'm going to try to do this here. I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to try to show it to you. Number two, 
rate your pictures, okay? And what I mean by that is so often, and I used to do this too, I used to be guilty of this. So often uh, we take 100 pictures, right? We put them into Lightroom or Aperture if you're using Aperture, and we would uh, just find the 30 best pictures or 50 best pictures. We export them and they sit on a hard drive and maybe we need to go back to them. Maybe it's more than 50, that'd be a nightmare. Uh, But we go back to them and we have to find that perfect picture that we want to get. So what I wanna show you right now or tell you and then show you is my system, and this is not like, I didn't come up with this. I think I got it from a YouTube video a decade ago, is to go ahead and rate your pictures and then sort your pictures through there. So I'm gonna try to share my screen here. Dave, tell me if it's working. Boom. Can you see my Lightroom? Oh, hey, hi. Oh, hey, yeah, there you are here. There we go. Is that your dad? You're just gonna have to sit in the corner. No, it's uh, this is from my last church. I had a little bit of an issue because my uh, external hard drive is packed away, so I had to grab these pictures real gotcha. quick and make sure there's no kids in them. So this is from our block party, and I would actually have more pictures, but this is just 15 pictures to demo for you. So I grabbed some pictures here. Most of these are pretty good, uh, but what I want to do is I want to actually rate them, okay? And that's my daughter, so she has permission to be in here. So what I want to do is rate them, okay? So for me, a five is going to be like, this can go everywhere. I love it. Four is, this is really good. I'm going to put it on social media and maybe on a slide or something like that. Three is, if I'm desperate for a picture, I'll use it. Two is, uh, this is not very good, but maybe I'll keep it for whatever reason. And then one is just, it's awful. I don't want this picture. So this is a, this is a very good picture. It's a little silly, so I, I, I want to plaster it everywhere, but it's good for the events. I'm going to click four and I'm going to give it a star rating of four. So down here in Lightroom, I'm getting ahead of myself. You have a star rating, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to give it a star rating of four because I can't just use this picture everywhere, but it's a really good picture of, you know, what's happening here. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to rate these. These guys, it's a good picture. His eyes are a little closed, but they don't go to our church. So if I need a picture of a carnival or something, I'll use it. I'll keep it. I'll give it a three. And I'm just going to go through here. Fantastic picture. I think that's a, I think that's a, if I crop it down, I think I can give that a five. It's oh, a good yeah. picture of our senior adults. Yeah, big time. Uh, this is Eddie. He's just giving a thumbs up. It's a good picture, but it's not, I don't want to plaster this picture everywhere. It doesn't tell the story. I'm going to give it a four. Uh, pastor speaking, it's a three. It's boring. Uh, let's see here. Uh, people singing, I give it a three because we're not on. This one's pretty good. I give it a four. I, the only reason it's not a five is because they are part of our Spanish-speaking church that meets at our building, so they're not quite part of our church. Uh, same thing with, well, this one's like a three. He's not really smiling. This kid's all right, but again, I'm going to give it a three, and I'm just going to kind of feel it. Love our bassist. Love our drummer. Um, and this is kind of too wide. This is kind of whatever. This one's a good one for kids' ministry, and she looks good. She's holding a ball. She's smiling. I'll crop out the background. I think I'd give that a four. This one's hilarious. This guy was just mocking you as he tried to throw the ball to get him dunked. Uh, and actually, it's a video. So I actually don't even, I'm not even going to rate it because it's a video. So, and then what I do is when I, when I export it, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to say filter by rated. And I'm going to look at all my five stars, which right now I just have five. So I'm actually going to export this into a folder that says block party, five stars. And I might tag it to senior adults, couple, something like that. And then I'm gonna go into four and I have a few pictures here that's great for the block party. These would be fantastic for social media or if I need to do other block party promotions and I'll, I'll edit them down some more and then export them. So I have them in a folder of four stars. And then the same thing with three. So I know if I need, uh, if I need a specific folder, well, this is actually adding all the pictures, but. Uh, if I need like just a, a band picture, you know, I might come in here and say, that's an okay picture. If I absolutely am desperate and I don't have anything else, I'll use these threes. And the two stars and the one stars that I rejected, which I don't think I did, uh, I'll not even look at those, right? Maybe if I just need to go back and reminisce or whatever. So that's my star rating system. So then we come back to me, uh, screen sharing, stop sharing. <clears throat> so then when I need block party pictures, I go into my block party folder and I'm not searching through 50 or 100 final pictures to find that one good one. I go straight to the five star folder and say, this is what I need. Or I go straight to the four star folder and say, I need uh, clips for a video. 
And I, and I know I'm getting the best of the best. I'm not searching through 100 pictures to try to find something. So photography tip, this is more on the organization side, but rate your pictures, sort them that way. Um, because oftentimes, like even my own vacation pictures, I'm like, I want to find that picture of Jill in a Minnie Mouse costume. I don't know what day it was. And I know it was a really great picture. If I had just rated it a five star, knowing I would want to sh show that picture to family, I could just go in that five star folder or in Lightroom, filter it by five stars and pull it right away. So that's my little tip for you as far as the organization side. Um, rate your rate your pictures. Rate your pictures. Okay. Dave, you want to take the next one? Oh, yeah, definitely. Let me pop over to it. Um, the next one, well, okay, this was this one was yours. You said to have a name tag printed if you're in a larger church to make people feel comfortable. Um, and I had never really thought about that. Um, alongside of that, I would I would have like your name and then have like, you know, photography team or photography ministry or something like that, just so that, number one, they can say, you know, hey, Justin, uh, don't take my picture. Or they can say, hey, Justin, here, get a shot of us. You know, that that kind of a thing. That they, They've got somebody that they can talk to, that they can identify, that they can speak to, and, and not be so awkward. What's that guy's name? Hey, photography guy. You know, that sort of thing. But then also... Yeah having you know photography team you know on the on the thing as well or you know design it a certain way you know make it look like a, a camera lens or you know, make it be a picture of you holding a lens like that and then next to it it says you know dave curley you know something like that that identifies you so that you're not some random person walking around who is this creep taking pictures of my kid oh he's doing this because he's part of the photography ministry and they're using some of this stuff to promote for vacation bible school you know, that sort of thing. It, it, it helps break down any of these uh, little perceived barriers that could be up. Would you like to explain? Yeah, and um, yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head. And it's it's as simple as when I joined my last church and I started taking photos, I told Thomas, because I was still kind of new. Mm -hmm. And I was already walking around after two months taking photos. I told him, I said, I still don't know everyone. I want to make sure people are comfortable. Can you make me a name tag? He literally took the bulletin background of the week and just wrote my name and then FBE church photographer underneath. I wish I still had it. I, it's in my camera bag, which is still packed away. Uh, but, and then put it in a little, just a generic name badge mm -hmm. holder thing. Uh, and when I, when I did that, what I noticed was, especially in the kids ministry, um, things were a lot easier. I was, it was easier to get into rooms, mm -hmm. right? Because they also knew, they also assumed, but I was, uh, that at, since I had the name tag, I was probably background checked and I was, right. uh, so I was able to get into the nursery easier, the children's area easier. But then also as I'm walking around taking photos, it's not, who's this creeper with the photo. It's always oh, part of the church. He's taking pictures and, you know, it kind of made people comfortable. So if you're either new or you're part of a larger church church with maybe multiple services and you're just never in second service mm -hmm. and you go in there for the first time to take photos, mm -hmm. a name tag will still do you well. And yes, Christopher, I still haven't unpacked all my stuff. We're kind of like we're on bare bones right now because life is crazy. So yeah, the, the photo, I know exactly what box it's in, but our photo bag is still packed away. So yeah, that, that was uh, that was uh, just a little quick tip here. And again, it doesn't have to be official, whatever, just print a name tag so people yeah. feel comfortable. Yeah. And, cool. and you'll find you'll find a lot, a lot of people are more relaxed around you. Yeah, and and not just for you, but you know, if you got two or three people on your team that are doing this, or if you have two or three people that will routinely, you know, they may be officially part of the team, but you know, she's the one that always takes pictures when when uh, when they announce new members. Okay, do something like that. Just, you know, breaks down those barriers. It's cool. Now, yeah. this 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 next one, uh, number four in our list here, uh, kind of goes <laughs> along the line of uh, number one. Um, which is rent before you buy something. Um, most towns of, of, of a given size um, are going to have like a, a camera store of some kind. So like here in the Metroplex, I mean, you know, camera, camera shops um, are, are, are slowly dying off, it seems, but we may, we may have kind of hit that little bottom part where the dying off has stopped because some of them are starting to come back because you get a lot of that personal attention that you get in there, uh, where you can, you can try things out. The, the guy behind the counter is a seasoned photographer and he can explain to you why this one is this one. 
um, and then she can tell you that this body is going to be better for this type of photography because of these reasons or something like that. So take advantage of that knowledge that, that you can have at your fingertips. You may not have this if you're, you know, like my hometown, you know, it's like 5,000 you know, farmers, <laughs> that's about it. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't, there's not one there, but I know I can go to Corpus and there's going to be at least one there up here in the Metroplex. There's a handful at least. Um, and some of these places may actually rent the, um, the, the lenses to you. They may rent lenses. They may rent kits to you if you need to use them. There's also plenty of online sources for that. There's websites that you go and sign up and then you can rent things and they will send them to you you know if you need a certain lens because i'm doing this you know our buddy ryan um the one of our mods in the the chat here um he is uh, branching out into some independent filmmaking and so for him you know, he has a pretty good kit already but let's say that he's called upon to do something um you know some sort of a scene or something he's like you know what for this for this this series of videos that we're going to do I should get a cine lens you know i should get a a a movie quality lens you know well Depending on what you're looking for, and they can be they can be a few hundred dollars, they can be a few thousand dollars, they can be twenty thousand dollars, you know. But you can rent one maybe for a couple hundred bucks, you know, maybe a hundred bucks a day or something. So, you know, just keep in mind that you don't have to buy something until you know it's gonna be something that you're gonna add to your kit and it's gonna be, you know, part of your 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 regular shooting kit under these circumstances. So try stuff out. Yeah, uh, Christopher is going nuts in the chat. Yes, Chris, we saw we saw your your link. Uh, Christopher recommends lenspro2go.com. Yes. lenspro2go.com. And and uh, I think this is fairly reasonable. Uh, you're talking about a four day rental, uh, so anywhere from lowest price I see here sixty bucks upwards of a couple hundred dollars depending on what you need. So if you want that camera, if you want that lens, that's probably too expensive and it's really just for one event and you can't justify it or maybe you just want to test it out you know go and check if you can rent it because i mean a 60 dollars rental for four days seems very legit oh, yeah. and um very reasonable and then when you have the proof of these are the kinds of photos that we're getting and it looks really good can you imagine if we could take these photos every month or at every soccer camp or at every event like vbs christmas thanksgiving easter like, okay, yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. I see the value yeah. in it. So, you know, we kind of talked about sometimes you got to prove it before you can buy it. Yep. This is an easy way to do that. And uh, not too many people think about it. So, no, yeah, and, you know, renting, it's, like Ryan said, lens renting is great. And, and I'll tell you, here, if you if you studied lenses uh, of any for any length of time, you'll um, if you if you watch anything on TV or if you take a look at some of your favorite YouTubers that are uh, teaching you how to do photography or video or something like that, you'll notice, especially if they're Canon shooters, that their lenses have a red ring around them at, at the tip. That's a that's a visual designator to tell you that that's part of their L line of lenses, which are their high end lenses. So, you know, here's a what is this one? This is this is an old Nikon Nikkor 55 millimeter. OK, so. This is this is like a 40, 40 or 45 year old lens. OK, but let's say that this was your average Canon lens. OK, and you could buy it for two hundred and fifty dollars, you know, a 55 millimeter, real nice lens. OK, two hundred fifty bucks. OK, Justin could go out and grab this lens next week and have a great lens and be happy with it and stuff. But a photographer that wants to that, that is really wanting to take some serious photos and all that will buy the big brother to this one which is the L line with the, the one that has a little red ring around it. And he may be willing to pay $2,500 for it. You know, it's a big difference. The glass is different. The optics in there are different. The mechanism is different. They're a lot more solid. They're going to last a lot longer and stuff like that. So, you know, let's say you want to, to, to see the difference. Rent an L lens and play with it and do that. Then you can say, look, here was, here was the event last weekend that I shot with this $200 lens, and here's the event this weekend that I shot with the $1,000 lens. And they're all across the board. I'm just I'm throwing numbers out there to give you perspective. Um, you know, but it's a, it's a $1,000 lens. But look at how infinitely better it is. Okay, you know, we know, Justin, because we've done it, the, the better the glass, the higher the quality of the glass, the crappier the camera system you can have. You can have a... $150 camera body that shoots only 10 megapixels, but if you put a $2,000 lens on it with fantastic optics and like razor sharp focus and, you know, I mean, holy cow, 
you can turn out mm -hmm. serious artwork quality stuff, you know, with a crappy body, but a really good lens, you know, it's kind of like me. I've got kind of a crappy body, but I've got a very creative mind. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> so uh, before we get to tip number five, uh, I just wanted to, again, if you're watching this beyond November 7th, you can't, I, the, the, the summit is over. Church Photography uh, Summit is on November 7th. It live streams for free. After the fact, you won't be able to access it. However, there is a thing that they have called the replay pass where you can basically purchase unlimited, basically on demand access to the videos now you can live stream it for free take good notes that's what i do for all of these online summits i very rarely buy the replay pass because i feel like i get what i need when i'm streaming but if i can't stream it or if i can't see it or if i just want to have it on demand to show my team the replay pass is very valuable to have and to make it more valuable if you go again churchtrainingacademy.com photo to go to the summit uh, sign up for the summit for free and if you do buy the replay pass Email me your receipt for so I'm going to give you a free pass. Uh, no, I'm change that. I'm going to give you two passes to our uh, group coaching. Cool. Right? You hear us talk about group coaching all the time. Basically, um, we meet. You bring your ideas, your obstacles, the things you want to talk about. What are your struggles? What do you need to work through? Mm -hmm. Is it computer connections, software, hardware? Um, An idea that needs vetting people, whatever it is, and we'll talk with you through that, okay? If you want to talk with me and Dave for an hour in consulting, it's $180, but you can get two mastermind passes. That's four hours of group coaching uh, for, for free yeah. if you buy the pass and forward it to me. So let's make it a little bit more valuable for you. So go to the summit for free, watch, learn, and if you want the replay, get it because then you're also going to get four hours of uh, it's basically two two group coaching sessions with me and Dave. So that's going to make it even more valuable as you implement these photography things that you're going to learn at the Church Photography Summit. So yeah, that's real quick. Dave, you want to take number five? Because this is something that I only recently learned. Okay. Uh, I want you to take number five because I've got a bonus uh, that I'm going to give that ties into number one and uh, and uh, number four about the lens swapping okay. and the lens renting is a little practical bonus. So why okay. don't you talk about the benefits of uh, pray and spray? <laughs> yeah, uh, but this is specifically in regards to taking photos of children, yeah. right? Um, we had Santa come to our church and I had a really hard time getting photos of the babies. And what I realized was I was doing it all wrong. I was kind of sitting there like, OK, baby, one, two, three, click. Uh, that didn't turn out good. One, two, three, click. And then the baby smiles and I'm like, oh no. And I click and then she's drooling over herself or something <laughs> like that. When, when you're taking pictures of children, you want to either burst shoot or just take three quick pictures in succession because babies are really hard and, and children too are really hard to get going. Especially if you have VBS or a children's activity and the kid's running and you're like, oh, they look so excited. You take the picture and then they look like this. Yeah. You know, but if you had just taken it a split second later, you would have gotten that smile that you were looking for. So uh, when you're taking pictures of children or anything that's happening fast, go with three quick pictures in successions or burst shoot if your camera has that. Uh, and that way you kind of just and again, using the rating system, filter out the bad ones, get that one really good one and you're going to get it more often. And, mm -hmm. and once I started doing that, I kind of learned it halfway of Santa pictures. It would just be like, all right, baby, here we go. Click, 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 click. All right. Yeah. That sixth one is perfect because we got yep. the perfect smile and all that stuff. Yep. And you do have to uh, adjust some settings when you do that, but you're going to get a better picture more often with the kids. And yeah. so I don't know if that's spray and pray, but it's strategic. It, spray it, it and is. Pray. Um, and, <laughs> and that same, that same idea guys goes along when you're doing say a youth event, like, you know, they're playing, playing one of the, you know, one of the wild and crazy games or they're doing the, the, you know, the, the big giant inflatable balls where, you know, you, you climb inside that ball and you play bumper pool out there on the lawn, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. When you're having things like that, um, you know, most of our cameras, um, can, can be set for like continuous, you know, and it could be, you know, 10 a second, it could be three a second, it could be 50 a second, you know, just depending on, you know, how, how what level your camera's at. But doing that uh, during those times as well uh, is really good. I mean, and it's, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna burn through a whole lot of photos and stuff, but you will get that one shot where, 
you know, they're playing flag football or something. And right when they do that and they bump and somebody's got a funny look. And I mean, that's fantastic. That hits the Facebook page. And it's just there are tons of engagement around it and stuff. You know, it's so, yeah, it's definitely worth doing, especially if you're going to go through and cull them all out. It's not like you're going to eat up your hard drive unless you're like me. I, I tend, unless it's a blatantly, obviously horrible shot, I tend to keep all of them because there have been times when I've gone back and go, no, I want that shot because I'm doing something about this one guy and here's a look on his face that's just perfect to mm -hmm. use, you know. So Yeah, and that's why I rate it two star because it's still kind of maybe come in handy. One star exactly. trash, like blurry, it looks like the exorcist or the something like that. The cap was on, lens cap <laughs> was on. Yeah. Christopher said uh, that this has saved him a lot, but also, and I didn't know this is still a thing, but yeah. I guess maybe some people may not know it. He said, have a fast card yes. so you can get a lot of photos at once. Yes. Uh, typically, I buy class 10. Is that... Is that still good, Dave, for that? Yeah. I, I find that I can still get three to five pictures off of that. Um, yeah. So here's here's the uh, – I'll, I'll hold it up to the screen so that you guys can yeah. see it. These are the ones – see, will it focus? Ooh, focus for me. There we go. So I'm using – this is a Class 10 card. It's a U3 card, which means that um, it, I, I, can, I can write to it very, very quickly um, for doing photos or like 4K, 30, or 60P video. So definitely make sure that you have a uh, a fast card. Uh, don't you know if it's like 45 meg mega megabytes a second read uh, or write. Um, you know that you 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 don't want that to be the weak link. And SD cards yeah. are so cheap, guys. I'm serious. I, I you know a 64 gig you know class three card. You know class 10 U3 card. You know for like 18 dollars. I mean come on. It's just buy a buttload of these high performance cards and keep them in that little card wallet buttload that's yeah, a technical and, uh, term for photography by the and, way and for the audio listeners if you look at the sd card it'll have a couple information yes. on it it'll have a number with a circle around it mm -hmm. that's the class mm -hmm. and then it'll also tell you how many megabytes per second it can write mm -hmm. and, and they'll uh, be like all a mine U. they'll be like a u like yeah. a like a bracket like like one of those square brackets laying on its side and then it'll have a number mm -hmm. in there the higher the number the better yeah, and so uh, I'm just looking here. My older cards are sitting at 80 per second, 80 megabytes per second. But I, I think the new ones you buy are even faster. So uh, definitely want a fast card for that, uh, and and get that done. So yeah. So Dave, what's this? Uh, what's this bonus you're the talking bonus. about? The bonus. Let me show you the bonus. Let me let me clip over here to my camera. Okay. So we were talking about doing the um, the lens swapping and stuff. Okay. So. I do lens swapping here with myself, right? Because I have some Canons and I have some Panasonics and I have some odd, odd things as well. Um, one of the things that I learned early on was that um, a, a, a lens is a lens is a lens when it comes to a certain point. Okay, it's glass. It's you know you've got optics in there and you can use it to focus on an image. Okay. Um, there are adapters out there that you can buy. So if, if your best friend, okay, so Ryan, uh, Ryan's one of our buddies, and uh, you know Ryan is a Panasonic guy. If I were a Canon guy, then you know maybe Ryan has some lenses that I want to use, and I have some lenses that Ryan wants to use. But Ryan's got a different platform than I do. He's, he's using you know he's using a GH4, you know, and I'm using you know in this case a, a cheap little Samsung thing. Um, the the lenses can be adapted and modified. Hang on. Dun, 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 Sorry, my dun, robot dun, decided dun, it was dun, time to dun, come dun, dun, uh, dun. vacuum, and it wants to come in here. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Close parentheses. Here we go. Um, so, you know, if Ryan and I were, were, you know, if he lived across the street and we were doing all kinds of uh, photography and stuff, and I needed to borrow this lens or he needed to borrow that lens... All, all we have to do is get an adapter so that his lenses will fit on my camera, my lenses will fit on his. So I got this a long time ago. This is a Samsung NX, uh, NX1000. It is one of the early mirrorless um, cameras, you know, micro four thirds mirrorless cameras. And it does 1080p video. It does great photography and all that. It came with a kit lens that, you know, is passable at best, okay? But I wanted to use it and I needed it. And my dad, had a ton of these lenses, these 40-year-old, my dad used to be a professional photographer, so in his camera closet are these lenses that are phenomenally good, phenomenally good lenses. So what do I do? So what I did was I ordered this little adapter 
And these are manual lenses, so I didn't even have to pay for an adapter that had like the circuitry built in that would translate autofocus and, and iris and all that sort of stuff. I just got a mechanical adapter and I can, whoop, where'd it go? And I can put it on here. And then this lens, the junkie lens can come off and the high end lens can go on. And I'm now ready with this cheap, cheap micro four thirds camera has now become a really good camera with a really good lens and in my case it was a great B camera for doing a bunch of video work that I was doing it was a, it was a second camera that I was using so you can do that um, over here where is it there it is I've got a GH4 uh, Panasonic GH4 that I use um, I've got some Panasonic lenses because I, I bought a G7 and so I bought some lenses for the G7 as well but the lens that I use 90% of the time on here is a is a Canon lens um, it's actually, what is it? It's a Sigma. Uh, what, what lens is this? It's the Sigma, not even written on there. It's like the 35, the 18 to 35, the Sigma 18 to 35. Um, it's a fantastic lens. And so what I did was I got the adapter to go on here. It's, it's from a company called Metabones. Um, it's the Metabones adapter. And it is a... Um, it's got a prism in it, it's got circuitry in it, it's got all this stuff built into it so that it can take this lens and make it work fully on the sensor on here properly. Not, not like cropping it or anything like that, but actually as if this, camp, this lens were native built for this body. It's really cool. So you've got options when you're doing that. You don't have to necessarily find if you're a panasonic guy you don't you say well i don't have any panasonic friends around here so i can't do i can't swap lenses i can't do stuff like that i just got to buy them and go broke you don't have to do that you can you know find someone that's got nikon find someone that's got sony and just get an appropriate adapter and the the way the adapters work is they are some of them are smart adapters um like the ones from metabones um and there's there's a couple of like viltrox i think that's how you pronounce them Viltrox makes lens, uh, lens adapters that are smart as well, and they're, you know, maybe fifty or sixty dollars less than the Metabones ones are. Metabones is kind of the, the high end, you know, the 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 premium ones in there. But uh, y there's also things like this. This is just a ring adapter. That's all it is. So I can I can take this and put it on my Canon 5D Mark III, and then use these 40 year old Nikon Nikkor lenses on there, and you know, they're great. So just keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, tit for tat, you know, when it comes to it. Get a couple adapters. These adapters, you know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 300 bucks. Just depends. But just check Amazon. There's a ton of them out there. Yeah. And speaking of Amazon, I just linked it in the chat. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, Metabones. Ryan said Metabones is the Cadillac of it adapters. It is. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so I, I didn't know that. I didn't. I just thought Canon cameras used Canon lenses. And the fact that you can get an adapter and it doesn't seem I mean, it doesn't it's not that big either. It's it's uh, mm -mm. it's not like a dongle on your camera. It just fits right in there. I'm assuming it adds virtually no weight. So it, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty exciting. I like of, that. One of the things that it does, actually, if we want to get a little technical, is oh, I, well, I got my adapter on the my little plate on the bottom here. One of the things that it does is I need to clean it. Is it has um, it's got a prism in there. So the the these micro four thirds lenses. If you take a look right there, see that the little shiny mirror piece in there? That's the sensor. That sensor in okay. there um, on, say, like one of your cameras, Justin, your your DSLRs, when you open it up, you necessarily don't see this. You see a mirror, like sitting at a canted angle, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the distance between the actual lens and this is about half the distance that it is when you're dealing with something with a mirror. So one of the things that this thing does, you notice there's a there's a... a like a, a lens on that side and a lens on this side. And what it does is it takes the image coming in from this giant lens and focuses it down so that it covers the sensor. So you get you get full sensor coverage, um, just not necessarily full sensor size as if you were using like a like a complete, you know, 35 millimeter full frame thing. That's, that's it's really getting in the weeds and stuff. But um, th these are great. Yeah, I'm I'm in the weeds and it's itchy and I can't see. I'm losing sight of you, Dave. Yeah. Where did help you go? me. <laughs> so anyway, these are great. So definitely try that. Between renting and and when you're renting, check they may actually have adapters um, as part of the rental kits and stuff. And if not, just buy them. They're they're inexpensive. Even if you just do the manual ones uh, without the the smart chips in them. Um, 
Yeah, and cool. uh, Ryan said something too that I think uh, is worth mentioning, and then we'll close the show. Okay. Ryan said something. Lenses hold value. Yes. Camera bodies do not. Exactly. Exactly. Do you still use that lens that your you said your your dad gave you or yeah. used to use? Do you still use that? Uh-huh. It's still good. Yes, it's it's a great lens. And what's it's like cool, an old? It's like your grandma's uh, cast iron or right. KitchenAid stand yeah. mixer. Yeah. What's what's you cool? Still use it. What's cool about about these lenses and the the lenses do hold value. Um, you can you can buy old lenses, and what's cool is you can buy old lenses that. Um, that that are not going to be as expensive. Some of them will be, um, but they won't be as expensive as what a, a, a an equivalent is right now. However, the quality uh, can be really good, especially when you've gone back thirty years or forty years, mm-hmm. and you have these lenses that they're all manual. You know, these these lenses were not autofocus lenses. Uh, they weren't meant to be autofocus lenses. They're all manual lenses and stuff. The optics were hand ground and they were done at a certain time at a certain place. Um, and so they have this look. One of the things that I like about these these lenses specifically is that um, they are not this over razor sharp image. There's an analog feel to it. It's sharp. I mean, and it's in focus. But it's not so sharp that you can see the jagged edges almost. With some of these cameras that just take these impeccably sharp things, you can see the hard line going around your face in the ba- and then you know the the seat or the chair or the wall or whatever behind you. You know sometimes they're over sharp, and these have a very analog earthy feel to them, and they're great, especially if you're shooting older people that actually could use a little bit of softening <laughs> in their shots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when you talk about being over sharp, I'm um, the dummy. Is that kind of like when you look at a picture and you're like, that looks like it was green screen, but it wasn't green screen. Right. Like they're so in the yeah. foreground. Like, so is that what that is yes. being too sharp? Because I get that sometimes. Yeah. I was watching uh, one of my uh, the guys that I, I watch online um, and uh, who I listen to a podcast, Cliff Ravenscraft. He's the mindset answer man. He used to be the podcast answer man, the mindset answer man. He's great, by the way. Y'all follow him. Um, he shot a video using his his iPhone 11 Max Pro, whatever it is, you know, the, the biggest and the best, mm-hmm. shot it in his car. He was doing a vlog, um, did just like you and I do, you know, set it up on the dashboard, you know, with a little sticky thing to the window, um, and he was shooting it. He didn't use a microphone, didn't use anything, and he, I, I was watching it, and technically it looked great. It, it looked, everything was exposed really well. Um, he was, you know... He was lit well. The stuff behind him in shadow w- it was actually lit well. It almost kind of had a little HDR-ish kind of a feel to it and stuff. It was razor sharp. The sound was great. I thought that was awesome because he didn't use a mic. It sounded like he did, though. But mm. I was watching it on my big screen, and I was looking at it going, this looks almost too perfect. There's something there's something unsettling about how great this looks. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's um that and and by the way that's just a trick. Sometimes, if you just soften your stuff just a little bit, just a little bit, and take some of that harshness off of it, uh, it becomes more pleasing to the people that are watching it. Anyway, close parentheses. Especially when you're filming, Dave. Hey, I'm using moisturizer. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I look like a hobo. I I'm not. I'm trying no shave November again. So. Well, this ought to be. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna 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 look like a patchwork quilt. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'll shave it before it gets too bad. But my <laughs> wife gave me permission this year, so we'll see how it goes. That ought to be good. <laughs> Is she doing the same thing? Uh, ah, nope. <laughs> She's gonna kick me, isn't she? <laughs> probably. It's probably good. You've never met. Do you? We you've never met Bridget in person. So no, we no. We've talked that. online with the comments and all that stuff yet, though. She's like the yeah. only holdout. Yep, yep. And comments like that just extend it even more. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, well, that's it. I hope you guys took good notes, church photography tips you never heard of. Uh, and again, question of the day, uh, are you taking photos at your church? How often? Do you walk around once a month? Do you walk around every week? Do you got your camera on you every all the time, just waiting for the opportunity? We're curious to know. We're we're building a list. Yes. No, I'm kidding. No, yeah, we're building, no, no we, we want to know and, and but, how and, often and, you how often do you are you the photographer for your church? Yeah, and and show your work if you can. Yeah, please. We'd, yeah, we'd love show to your see work. It. 
search media hacks find us on facebook we'd love to see that yeah absolutely guys take everything that you've learned today and use it to go change lives because that's if, if we're not changing lives then all of this is a bunch of worthless garbage we'll see you guys in the next one